We've heard um, Jacob Zuma this morning say that climate change is a matter of life and death in Africa. Um, are the actions within South Africa reflecting that? Is, is his government pushing forward on this agenda? Well, in recent times, um, in fact, in just ahead of this COP, South Africa did adopt their national climate change response paper, about plan, actually, uh, which gives a bit more flesh to how we will achieve the Copenhagen pledge that we made. So they have been moving on that, and I think that they added to that. There have been increased investments in renewable energy. They've increased the target for renewable energy in this country. But in the end, I think that we do need to do much more. It's important to understand that the context in South Africa is a difficult one. We've come out of this history. We have a lot of developmental challenges. We have huge poverty and we have massive unemployment. And so those challenges need to be seen in the context of dealing with climate change. And what is interesting is that the South African government has actually seen this not as mutually exclusive, but looked at the way of addressing both uh, finding the solutions for climate change, but at the same time dealing with the issues of poverty and job creation. He announced the accord, uh, if you heard him in the plenary, that was recently signed between the government and business and labor. Um, 300,000 jobs to be created through the green economy. So there is a commitment. Obviously, we believe that there's always room for much more ambition. I don't believe that there's a lack of commitment. I certainly think as the solutions present themselves, the government needs to be pushed into adopting those solutions. And is it going to provide a supporting context for these talks here? Are you hopeful that we might have some positive outcomes in Durban? Well, we're always hopeful. Uh, we really did, because we need to have positive outcomes. And so we'll be working towards that as WWF. We believe that, as I said, the parties would have to understand what's at stake. Uh, there's just so clear. It's not as if our leaders are uninformed about what's at stake. And they need to display political leadership. That is what's missing here. And so we hope that they will start shifting from the very hardline positions on many of these issues and understand that they have to act in the interest of the global good. And you mentioned in the press conference there that South Africa has a rich history of, of activism and, and, and fighting for global justice. Do you see a consciousness of climate change here and do you see that being played out again? Are we going to see a, a, a movement arising in, in Africa which really uh, has an impact on the global stage? Well, I think it's still a very big challenge to get the masses of ordinary South Africans understand the issue, build awareness around that. I don't think we've really succeeded to get ordinary South Africans involved and understanding this issue. And this is one of the things that, once that happens, people understand the impact and the impact on them as individuals, I believe that there will be a growing movement. It's a necessary element of ensuring that we do get political leaders to act as well. So we have to build that awareness amongst our population. We have to have an active citizenry and we do need them once they are fully empowered with the information to start putting pressure on the governments to take action as well. And for our viewers around the world watching, what should be the wins that they're looking out for here? What are the things that we really want to come out of these talks? Well, I think it's key that we get certainty about the bindingness of the actions that countries will commit to. They need to, of course, ramp up the ambition in terms of the actions that they commit to. But we also do want to see funding come through. We've got the Green Climate Fund that will, we hope will be agreed to in this conference, but we can't have an empty shell. You can't have a bank with no money. And therefore, we'd like the issue of certainty around where that money will come from, the pledge that has been made by developed countries because we cannot actually deal with the emissions in developing countries, we cannot deal with the impacts of climate change without support. That is absolutely clear, so we do need to see that funding flow. Tasneem, thanks very much for joining us and we'll look forward to catching up with you later in the conference. Thank you.